Hey YouTube, what's going on? It's Matteo. Thank you for joining me today. It's a hot one, but it's even hotter for my Infinity G35 because the cooling fans do not appear to be operating. So I'm going to be diagnosing that today. Let's jump right into this. Basically, there's a couple major things to check with your cooling fans. There are two fuses in the engine room fuse box which is located just in front of the battery and if you have the cover you'll see on the upper right you've got one for radiator fans a 40 amp fuse and then next to it there's a multi fuse which has another 40 amp radiator fan fuse so my plan of attack is I'm going to test those two fuses. If they are good, we're going to then check the relays. There are actually three relays. Those relays are located under this plastic cowling in the IPDM, I think they call it, which is basically another fuse box. You can go in there and manually pull those fuses out. Despite what I've read online, they are actually replaceable fuses. They're not integrated into that module. Each relay has a little tab where you can get a small screwdriver in, push it down and pull the relay out. You can test those. However, instead of doing all of that, it's not a big deal to remove this cowling, but you don't need to. The car actually has a built-in diagnostic mode that will actuate all of the major systems, the AC clutch, the headlights, and the relays for the fans. It'll fire all those things off without actually having to get the engine hot enough to activate those relays. So you can rule out the engine coolant temperature sensor in that case, or at least bypass any faulty reading. Now in my particular instance, I noticed my temperature gauge was going up, which leads me to believe the ECT or my engine cooling temperature sensor was doing its job. If there was a situation where you were getting no reading on your temperature gauge on the dash, that might be suspect. You may also have codes related to your ECT if you have uh, an issue with that. Now, the car does have that built-in diagnostic mode. I also have an advanced scan tool where I can command the fans on right from the scan tool. So there's more than one way to skin a cat here. Depending on the tools you have at your disposal, you can really diagnose this. And the cool part about diagnosing it is that we're not throwing parts at it. I'm not replacing fuses, I'm not replacing relays, I'm not replacing the engine cooling temperature sensor just to find out that my fan assembly is dead. I want to figure out what's wrong and then replace the faulty component. And I recommend if you're going to wrench on your own vehicles, get in the habit of practicing good diagnostics. You will save time and money instead of firing the parts cannon at your vehicle and your bank account. That is my speech there. Let's get to it. So hopefully everyone can see. We've got our under the hood fuse box right in front of the battery. We've got two tabs on the side and we squeeze them, pull up comes right off. Now, mine has the diagram of uh, what fuse is what, and I can confirm that we've got a radiator fan fuse right there. It's 40 amps, and we have another one next to it. Now, this is a multi-fuse. It's got a 50 amp main fuse, and then there's a 30 and 40 fuse integrated into it. So that's a little more tricky than testing the single fuse, which we'll start with first. We're gonna set our meter to continuity. So on my meter, it's this little diode looking thing in the sound, and I hit function, and that actually will enable the sound when there's continuity. You can carefully just lift this fuse out. The second fuse will be a little more challenging to get out as there's less room to grip it. So I'm gonna just take my probes and carefully, I'm not shoving them in there. I've got them in there and I can audibly hear that this fuse is good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that bad boy back. That fuse has been ruled out as a problem. So with this multi-fuse, I'm gonna just very carefully, I can't emphasize that enough, get a, a flathead screwdriver to just kinda of help me lift it up and I don't want to damage any of the other fuses next to it. Just trying to work it out, work it out. There she goes, very carefully. Then once I got it going, I'm gonna just try to wiggle it out. All right, so you'll see, if you look on the bottom, on the 50 amp side, we have got a terminal. It's, if you look at it, it's got like this 
little offset that comes out. That is a common rail. And basically, any one of these big terminals, the electricity comes in and it feeds these smaller terminals. So what I'm going to do to test this out is come in, I'm gonna come in from that one on the offset and then come in at the 40 leg, which is on the end, like that. And that is our test. And as you can hear, we are good. So as simple as that, I've ruled out our fuses. Our fan fuses are good. All right, everyone, I'm gonna demonstrate the built-in diagnostic, I think they call it the body control module self-test. It's going to put the car in a mode where it kind of goes round robin and cycles certain systems. You're gonna hear things like the wipers go off. And to that end, um, it might behoove you to make sure you've got some water on your windshield so you don't scratch anything. I'm not too worried about it even though I should be. Eventually, approximately a minute into the test, it's gonna to get to your fan relays and it will power those relays on. So before you get into this test mode, you'll wanna make sure you have a multimeter set to DC volts and you're going to want your probes in the fan wires. We're gonna be testing for voltage at the, the fan plug. I believe I tested the blue and yellow wires on, on my vehicle. Each fan had the same wires. In fact, you don't even need to disconnect the harness. I came in from the back with my meter and pushed the contacts into the rubber grommets carefully so I didn't damage anything, but they were able to be held in place nicely there while I was able to observe. So to put the car in this mode, you're gonna want your driver's side door open. I've got my key out, but I'm gonna put the key in. I'm gonna turn the car to on, and I've got my left hand on the door switch. And what I'm gonna do is once I turn the car on, I'm going to push this door button quickly 10 times. Push down, release, push down, release, repeat 10 times. So here we go. And I'm gonna turn the car off and then turn it back on. That little beat tells me I did everything properly. So what's gonna happen now is the car is in diagnostic mode. That's gonna happen, wipers. Um, the lights are going to flash. There's going to be different clicking sounds. The AC clutch, you're gonna hear that cycle. It's basically testing a lot of the subsystems of the vehicle. At this point, you would wanna be monitoring your meter and checking for voltage. Lastly, we can diagnose the vehicle with a scan tool. Now, your run-of-the-mill scan tools will not likely be able to conduct a test like this. You will need a more advanced scan tool that has the diagnostic software from the manufacturer. So that's important. The particular tool I'm using is an Autel MaxiCheck MX808. Um, it was a few hundred dollars, so it's quite a bit more money than a basic scan tool, but this product lets you really get into the nitty gritty of the vehicle. And for me, it has saved me a lot of time and money diagnosing things with the manufacturer software. You can get in and see what every single sensor is doing. It's very much a time saver. So I'm gonna go ahead and load the Infinity program. And you'll definitely need a degree of patience. It's not the fastest tool. I usually do manual selection. I'm gonna go ahead and do my North America, USA. We've got a G35 coupe. I think that's the chassis code 2003. And that's the one. Right now it's talking to the vehicle. We are going to get into the diagnostics. I'm gonna do control unit. It's gonna take a second to basically list all of the control units that Infinity has. If you chose something here that the vehicle doesn't have, you're gonna get some kind of error message. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and do engine. It's not body control module. It, this function is actually controlled by the uh, ECM. 
We'll give it a second to link up to the car. Okay. And I've got the key on engine off as far as the status. If we're checking the functionality of our fan relays, you would want to have your multimeter uh, set up and ready to go. And we can do an active test. We got a couple different tests, but we are looking for cooling fan. All right. And I'm not sure why we have all of these different things that come up. But I am looking for cooling fan once again. I'm gonna hit okay. Now you see current status is off. It's giving us a reading from our engine coolant temperature sensor. We can choose high or low. So you can test all of the relays under there basically. And depending on where you've got your probes, you may have the high or low circuit being tested. You can choose between whatever test is applicable. You'll see our current status is low. You should also hear the relays click if you are got your head under the hood or maybe you got a helper out. There. Basically, you would set your fans to your desired speed and then go check your meter, confirm voltage or not and then you can turn them off and get out. We are done. I'll go ahead and power everything down. All right, viewers, so what did we learn from that test? When we activated those fan relays, I had voltage to my fans. I have concluded that my relays are testing good. They're doing their job. That leaves the culprit as the cooling fan assembly itself. Now I know my initial thought was, well, there are two fans. It's kind of unlikely in my mind that they would both fail at the same time, but I continued to think a little bit further about it. And the two fans, it may have been a situation where one fan died, the other fan continued to run up until it also met its fate where it stopped working. So who knows when the fans died. They may not necessarily have died at the same time. But in any event, if your relays are working, your fuse is functioning, and your engine coolant temperature sensor is not giving any codes, which in my case it wasn't. I did check that on my scan tool. You can safely assume your fan assembly needs to be replaced. I'm going to go ahead and order a new cooling fan assembly for this car, and that's going to fix this issue. I'm pretty confident about that. So stay tuned. Once I get my hands on that part, I'm going to go about replacing that. So stay tuned, everyone. Thank you all for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Like, subscribe. All that great stuff, and until next time, Maddie is out of here. See ya.